Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Dinosaurs may be reborn in the near future. At the height of their powers, dinosaurs ruled the Earth for more than 140 million years. But their reign came to an end when a colossal asteroid impacted Earth about 65 million years ago along the Gulf of Mexico. Modern humans have only been around for about 200,000 years, and as humans, we should be thankful they're not around because, let's face it, if they had somewhat survived that catastrophe, our ancestors would have never have evolved, and you wouldn't be watching this video right now. Which then begs the question, with all the scientific knowledge and technology we currently possess, is it possible for us to resurrect these reptilian behemoths from the dead? And the more interesting question is, do we really want to? Where to begin? For us to get to the bottom of this answer, we have to consult the professionals. According to one of the leading paleontologists at the Natural History Museum in London, the process of respawning dinosaurs can be complex, especially if we think the way Hollywood does. If you can recall the 1993 blockbuster film, Jurassic Park, the resurrection of the dinosaurs in this film was actually done by deriving dinosaur DNA captured in a blood-sucking mosquito which had, fortunately, been preserved in amber for millions of years. But could this be another of Hollywood's embellished stunts? Let's analyze the evidence before us. You see, amber is a naturally occurring tree resin that is fossilized when a tree is subjected to high pressures and temperatures from being covered by layers of rock and sediment for millions of years. Due to the pressure, the resin gradually hardens over time and transforms into gemstone, a valuable mineral resource in the modern world. According to the film, the scientists derived dinosaur DNA from a well-preserved prehistoric mosquito. And as you know, DNA contains the genetic imprint for a particular species that dictates the growth and overall functioning of an organism. Therefore, could prehistoric DNA be the key to unlocking the genetic blueprint to bring these ancient reptiles back to life? It's not as easy as it sounds. Paleontologists have, in fact, uncovered biting flies and mosquitoes from the Mesozoic that preyed on dinosaurs and were perfectly preserved in amber. Unfortunately, when the amber preserved these ancient insects, it protected the husk, not the soft tissues where blood that would have potentially carried dinosaur DNA would have been preserved. So that means that the chances of respawning dinosaurs as depicted in Jurassic Park and, according to how Michael Crichton wrote it, would be one in a million, or 65 million to be exact. Nevertheless, the endless search for dinosaur DNA soldiers on. In fact, paleontologists have been able to recover blood residue from different fossilized ancient insects, just not preserved in amber. A few years ago, a paper was even published about an unearthed ancient mosquito that was traced back to the Eocene roughly 45 million years ago. While that might have been 20 million years after the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, scientists have found that the mosquito was well preserved in lake sediments and contained a reddish pigment in its abdomen. Upon running chemical tests on the pigment, the scientists were dazzled to find the pigment possessed hemoglobin-derived porphyrins. So, the notion that we might one day discover an ancient mosquito from the Mesozoic containing the blood of an ancient dinosaur is not that far-fetched. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal, you just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Blood not DNA. However, even if scientists do discover more ancient insects with well-preserved dinosaur blood, this doesn't necessarily mean that they'll find dinosaur DNA present. So the possibility of recreating these ancient creatures from blood would be null and void. In fact, in 2015, paleontologists in London discovered what they interpreted to be the red blood cells in the fossilized bone of a Cretaceous dinosaur. The scientists were certain that the red blood cells weren't from modern contamination. Additionally, the blood cells possessed nuclei, which is not a trait observed in red blood cells of mammals, but of reptilian blood. 
When compared with the red blood cells from birds, the two showed uncanny morphological similarities. Unfortunately, when paleontologists directed a focused ion beam to dissect and stain the nucleus, they did not find any DNA present within the cells. Which means that even if we do find blood tissue, the chances of finding an entire DNA genome is non-existent. We have, however, found ancient incomplete DNA in subfossilized bones and bodies preserved in permafrost. The problem is that DNA is quite vulnerable and breaks down rapidly over time. Environmental effects such as sunlight and water have a negative impact on DNA and even accelerate its deterioration. Additionally, there is also the problem of modern contamination which means that any DNA discovered has to strictly be kept under controlled conditions. The oldest DNA to be found currently in the fossil records is about 1 million years old, though most paleontologists believe that this DNA was possibly even younger. Can we cross dinosaurs with frogs? Now, even if we do find dinosaur DNA, what would be the next step? Well, according to the Jurassic Park script, when scientists unearthed the dinosaur DNA, they simply took it to the park's engineering facility and combined it with frog DNA to recreate some of these extinct reptiles. The science gets even weirder. According to the movie, the DNA discovered was actually fragmented DNA, so that in areas where the DNA was missing a piece of genetic code, scientists could easily replace it with frog DNA. But according to actual paleontologists, such a strategy doesn't make sense. First of all, how do you know where the holes are if you don't have a clear picture of the entire genome? Yes, the genome is the entire set of all DNA material that shapes a living organism. If scientists do not possess the entire genome, then they can't tell what parts of the DNA are missing and hence won't be able to fill the missing gaps to determine the whole structure of the said animal. On the other hand, if scientists do possess the whole genome, then it's absurd that they would use frogs to fill in the gaps and holes of the fragments. First of all, frogs are amphibians. Secondly, the closest living ancestor of the dinosaur is the bird. So you would rely on bird DNA because birds are closely related to dinosaurs. Additionally, you can also use crocodile DNA because crocodiles and dinosaurs shared one common ancestor. And now we've come to the best pick of the day. It's the question we all ask ourselves. If we did eventually bring back the dinosaurs, how could they be integrated into our highly urbanized and populous world? You see, dinosaurs were gigantic and hence required large areas as territory. Sauropods were particularly massive, weighing more than 50 tons and herding in large numbers. The parks of today wouldn't be sufficient enough to sustain their numbers, so it wouldn't be a surprise if some of these dinosaurs wandered into cities and towns. Cloning a Dinosaur The idea of cloning a dinosaur might seem feasible on paper, but the actual process would be complex. Let's take a look at the facts. DNA breaks down gradually over time. So considering the fact that dinosaurs went extinct more than 65 million years ago, so much time has passed that it's highly unlikely that any dinosaur DNA would be preserved today. Yes, dinosaur bones might have survived the harsh climatic changes of the world for millions of years, but sadly, we don't think dinosaur DNA would have ever had a chance of making it past a million years. That doesn't mean that scientists have given up. If anything, they are still searching for dinosaur DNA as rigorously as possible. For now though, cloning a dino might not be plausible. What about reverse engineering? Another alternative, and certainly the most promising one, is to reverse engineer the dinosaurs. The process simply involves starting with a currently living ancestor and moving back the genetic line until we finally arrive at these ancient reptiles. It would be tedious work reverse engineering 66 million years of evolution. Might even take half a century to do it. But theoretically, if it would work, then we'd have to start with birds. Scientists would genetically reverse a chicken to possess teeth and a long tail as its ancestors did. But even if we did do this, that's still not a dinosaur because it would have been purposely modified and not occurring naturally. You now see why dinosaur DNA is so important? Additionally, reverse engineering could bring forth some serious ethical issues. For example, if you engineer a chicken to grow teeth, 
do you automatically grow its claws as well? But the animal died out 150 million years ago. Would it be able to adapt to this whole new world if you bring it back? Could you just be setting it up for a torturous life? As for the herbivorous dinosaurs, what would they be able to eat if the plants that evolved back then had different levels of toxins? How would they adapt to the new plant species that they consume? Plus, even if we do resurrect dinosaurs, model parks like Jurassic World wouldn't be the right way to settle them. Remember, most dinosaur species were massive and thus required large territories to roam. The amount of resources used to relocate them would far outweigh the financial benefits they would rake in. Don't be fooled by Jurassic Park, that's honestly a failed business model. Additionally, the chances of these dinosaurs surviving our modern ecosystem with different levels of oxygen, different predator-prey relationships, and different plants would be quite a challenge. Heck, 65 million years of staying dead is not that easy to adjust to. Paleontologists even believe that it's more feasible for us to bring back species that we hunted to extinction, like the dodo bird because for such animals, they were still living in this current ecosystem. Nevertheless, we are hopeless romantics when it comes to dinosaurs, and the dream of resurrecting one of the most diverse epochs of ancient life still inspires us. Let's leave you with the words of one witty biologist who quipped, just because we can do it doesn't mean that we should. On the bright side, wouldn't it be great to one day dig your teeth into a delicious patty made of allosaurus meat? Hmm, now that would be a delicacy. And that's all she wrote in this video, folks. So what's your take? Do you think we should resurrect dinosaurs from the dead? Let us know in the comment section below. Want more videos that would probably still exist until the end of time? Click on any of the videos you see on the screen. As always, thanks for watching.